I'm a miniature maker, gonna make a miniature house, gonna build it just like a regular house, but right size for a mouse, right size for a mouse. Oh, I'm a miniaturist, perhaps you'd like to be one too. Well, my way's not the only way, but I'd share mine with you, I will share mine with you. Hello, and uh, welcome back to Small Talk. Or for those who are here for the first time, uh, welcome to Small Talk. My name is Luca Passo. I will be your host. This is Small Talk, the miniature house show, the show where we sweat the small stuff. On a previous episode, uh, we worked on making a bandit material into cedar siding, and I think mine turned out quite well. And if you tried this at home, I hope it worked out as well for you as it did for me. Or whatever you're working on, I hope that it brought you joy and it met or exceeded your expectations, because ultimately, that's all that matters. On today's episode, I would like to show you how I make an authentic looking vinyl composite tile floor. Uh, I've done a lot of flooring in the past, though typically I find flooring beneath me. Just a quick warning though, this show is not vegan friendly because vinyl floor has laminate. A compliment I often receive after doing a project is that I am gifted. Though I appreciate that compliment, I don't see what I'm doing as a gift. I see the gifts I have are being born able-bodied in a nation with a great deal of resources. But it's more of a talent, a talent built on years of learning and years of mistakes. A great foundation of mistakes it takes to learn a trade. So today's episode may be primarily about how to put down a authentic looking vinyl composite tile floor it's secondary about forgiveness. Number one, forgiving thyself. And you'll see, since we have to fabricate our tile out of a larger vinyl tile, it's not going to be factory perfect. So when we lay it down, you're going to see slight flaws and defects. So I'm going to show you a couple little tips on how actually those little defects, just like the little flaws in yourself, will add to a more beautiful final product. So stick with me, and hopefully you'll learn a couple little tricks. Some people might call me a hoarder. I, however, think I just have tons of cool shit. One problem with being a miniaturist is uh, you don't really throw anything out, even despite how small it is. You're like, I could use that for something like this here. It's just thin sheets of brass, which I'm going to use to make a metal roof. Or I have all this fake copper, which I'll someday make a metal roof with. Um, but in this case, this extra tile I have um, is actually part of being a smart homeowner. It's always a good idea, whatever project you do, even just in your house, um, buy extra material because uh, um, you think they don't stop making the classic black and white tile, but as the last couple years tell you anything, uh, they seem to stop making a lot of stuff. As per usual, I consult first with a genuine article. Uh, I put this VCT tile down about two years ago. It's holding up pretty well. Um, I used to be pretty firmly against putting vinyl on top of wood floors. That was something that was done in the 1910s and 20s. It actually, I mean, at the time, it made sense to uh, cover it up for ease of cleanup, and it was actually a luxury thing to have that instead of wood floors. And then it wasn't until like the 90s it started coming back to wood. But this is slowly creeping back in, especially if you can get your hands on like the kind of cool old vinyl floors, but we'll talk about that later. But really, so with these VCT tiles, uh, they're one foot by one foot, and in the miniature world, we're working in one twelfth. So one twelfth of, it makes it easy that one foot equals, uh, then will equal one inch. So which is a traditional size of a tile. Uh, except for a lot of them are nine by nine. And if you see a nine by nine tile, that's an asbestos tile. If you don't know what asbestos is, that's, uh, uh, that's what will kill you. Uh, like they always talk about, man, they knew how to make things back in the day. Which is true. They would last your entire lifetime because it would be shortened by... The materials they use to make it. Smart woman, easiest flooring to care for. Save every way with Kentile vinyl asbestos tile. So if you see nine by nine tiles on your floor, I would hire a professional or uh, at least very least just leave them alone. Asbestos is actually, it's all right. It's kind of like bees or 
old ladies in the middle of a bingo game. If you leave them alone, they won't kill you. I'd like to bring your attention back to the Bellingham farmhouse. Uh, again, this was a kit, uh, but kits don't give you the interiors. You pick those yourself. And I wanted uh, this to match as close to possible as my actual house. So I wanted to use the same vinyl tile that I got in the kitchen in here, uh, but they don't make one inch by one inch tile. So I had to fabricate them myself. So that took away all the factory edges. So, but I'll show you little tricks to kind of make them look tight. Uh, also not in the kit is this little piece of trim here that I put on the edges, but I think it finishes out the front a little better, but I'll show you how to get these real tight along the front where it's most visible. Uh, so it looks nice and clean. So some things you'll need to finish today's project. Something solid to cut on. I'm using this piece of butcher block. Two tiles, one white, one black, or whatever color you like. A piece of wood is your subfloor caulking gun, a clamp, a razor knife, plenty of blades, some glue, another clamp, a tape measure, a square, and a pencil. As per usual, we confirmed we have everything we're going to need for the project, barring one thing. Again, it's just good practice, that way you don't go to the store and not get things that you need, or go there and buy things you already have. So we have everything but one thing, so we're going to go head out and grab that. Whoa, wrong one! That's way better. Pretty cool. Uh, one of the early side jobs I had was a VCT job, and I had done regular, like ceramic tile before, and I thought, how hard could this be? This is going to be simple. You just glue it down, and this old dude's like, you got to put that glue down and let it sit 45 minutes to an hour, or it won't set up. I was like, that's stupid. Glue's going to glue's going to glue. What the hell is it? What's the problem? So, but I slammed it out. It was it was one of, it wasn't a small space either. It was like 3,500 square foot, and uh. I did it, blasted through it, and a couple days later, uh, the lady called me. She's like, these tiles are like sliding everywhere. That was a side job I was using to support a wife and child, and it was a very expensive and embarrassing mistake. It was a, the hubris of youth. But it was mistakes like that, those kind of things. That's one of many mistakes that I've made that I've learned to then respect the reason they put that uh, instructions on the box. So. Um, as you know, I don't actually need any VCT. I just wanted to show you how cheap it was. It's 69 cents a tile, so go crazy with it. Uh, but I came in here, I only really need one thing. Um, this is strictly a preference thing. I'd play with it a little bit, but uh, for me, for this type of thing, I prefer the black caulk. Uh, I prefer the big black caulk, if I had to pick. All right, folks, so we're ready to truck along with this little project. As per usual, get a nice point on your pencil. This piece of wood here is going to act as our subfloor. Um, what that means is that's the floor of your kitchen, whatever size that may be. So you want to start by measuring out. We're 10 inches by 5 and a half. So that's 10 inches this way and 5 and a half this way. That's important because even in a regular size kitchen, you need to find out square footage so you know how much material to get. So you want to go length times width. So if you're 5 foot by 10 foot, that would be 50 square foot. huh? And as these type of tile are 1 foot by 1 foot, you would need 50 I would get 55. You always want to get 10% more if you're laying a floor. But in this case, uh, we're working in a dollhouse miniature, which is 1 12th. So lucky for us, um, I know we're, uh, I have an international audience, I know that. I'm a pretty big deal. I'm very international. But for the next few years, before America's inevitable decline, uh, we're going to stick with the uh, English standard uh, inches and feet. So on 1 12th, uh, one foot piece simply goes down to one inch. How easy for us. We essentially, we're going to cut this down to one inch pieces. So we're only going to really need about half, basically that many tile. But I'm going to go ahead and cut up a lot of these because I use this for a lot of different projects. So having too many is not a problem I'm concerned with. So lucky for me, my square is actually one inch. So when I go to cut these, I'm going to lay that square right to the edge of both the board 
and the tile. Take my clamps, clamp her down tight. The reason I have extra razor blades is because we're going to go through a lot of them. I'm also set up to the side. When you're cutting something like this, you don't want to be like cutting toward yourself. You slip and blow your whole ball sack open. You don't want that. So I'm going to ride this blade along the edge of the square. Keep my fingers and all that business up out of there. I'm not going all the way to the end. I'm leaving out about three quarters of an inch from here to the end. And I'm not cut all the way through. But with this material, you just wiggle it a little bit. And there you go, it's free. So now I'm going to set this right to the edge of my cut piece. Rinse, wash, and repeat. Switch my blade over to get a nice sharp bit. Depending on how cock diesel you are is how many times you need to cut through. And then we're just crossing the other way. This one you don't have to go as far. As far as in the depth of cut. All right, so there we got a cut grid. And like I said, these will snap off pretty easy. All right, before I move on to the white, watch your thumb, but I just go through and clean all the little edges up. Easier to do it like when it's, before it's all glued down on your floor. I like to get, have well more than I need in order to uh, be able to cherry pick the best ones. And then start again with the white. Uh, one thing I'll show you before I break this white one up, I don't know how well you can see it. See these uh, little white marks here? This is just part of the grid I cut out for, to break the tiles up. Um, but if I was to put black caulking in here, it would actually set them out nice to look like grout. So if you just want to do one solid floor there, that's little just one by one tile and it actually lays them out perfectly just by cutting them but then not breaking them up. And now we have our tiles all cut into little baby tiles, or uh, as I like to call them, infant tiles. Um, we're ready to go and lay out our floor. Uh, just like with a big floor, um, nothing drives me crazier than when you walk into a room and they start their... You don't start a floor in the corner here, uh, unless you're the devil. Um, you start it in the center of a room. This is, goes the same with a miniature or a large scale house. Otherwise, um, you would have a full tile here and then possibly a half tile here. Or it would look like Willy Wonka, some sort of nonsense like that. So what you do is you need to find the center. Um, also, in a miniature, there would typically be walls up on either side, but the process is still basically the same. There's a couple ways you could find the center with something this size. You could do like this. If you had a chalk line in a big room, that's the way you got it. Center. Or you just measure it. Ten, which would make it five. By five and a half. So you'd be a two and three quarters. Anyway, that is our center. Then I'm going to run a 45. And start just like that. So that way that point will hit this line and that point rides along this line here. Again, you want to dig around and find it's a little bit of a puzzle, two pieces, because they're not going to be dead perfect. So you move them around to find ones that the edges line up pretty good. See this gap right here? Don't freak out about that. And this is the part I really enjoy. It's kind of meditative. Uh, you could be alone with your thoughts. Or maybe even sometimes I sing a little song. What he knows nothing but pecking on a bow. Oh, but the skies are blue. I never knew what love could do till darling I met you. Till 
darling, I made you. Did you see the turtle dove flying from pine to pine, longing for his one true love? As I, my dear, for mine, oh mine, as I, my dear, for mine. Oxen poles a four horse plow. Sparrow, why can't you? Cause my legs are little and brown. They might get broken too, too. They might get broken too. Woody knows nothing but pecking on the bow. Oh, but the skies are blue. Never knew what love could do. Till darling, I met you. Till darling, I met you. Not included in my tools is a pair of snips, but a little pair of shears, not quite scissors. As you can see, it's a little less than perfect, uh, but we're going to let the glue dry, and then we'll button it up. Well, here we are. The glue's all dry. Um, for all extents and purposes, I think this is a very nice-looking floor. I wouldn't be ashamed to display that to my friends and family. For most miniatures, I think this would do quite well. Um, this is just an additional step uh, that's totally up to you, totally preference, um, to fill these little cracks in. But like I said before, I was going to show you how I get that edge nice and clean beforehand. Really, that's you take this blade. I know I said don't cut to you, but you're keeping the thumb down here. And you just slowly shave it on back. Do that around the sides, and it gives you a nice flush edge there. Um, a lot of times, um, I'll do the flooring and everything before I put the walls up, because I can't get my fat hands in there. So in order, if you don't do this, it'll keep your walls from sitting flush against it. All right, anyway, like I said, here's the additional step that you may or may not take. I take my big black cock, my big thick black cock. I cut just a tiny bit of it off. You can, again, you can use white caulking, black caulking, what have you. All right, and have a wet rag at the ready. It's essentially just like you're grouting tile. And if you never grout a tile, it's kind of like you're just spreading caulk on a miniature floor. All right, then you have your wet rag. All right, again, I think this last step is totally preference but I think it makes it I think it fills it out quite a bit nicer um, fills all those little gaps and cracks and makes it look pretty tight so again you can use white um, let's say I had this little trick on here that's the plain white tile and these are a couple of the cuts that are left through throw to press that in there It makes that one nice and dark. So if I did that as a grid, it would look like black grout or conversely white on black vinyl. So anyway, folks, you got yourself a nice VCT floor. Um, uh, hopefully that's uh, some tips in there that are useful to you. The little caulk trick that comes in all different colors and shades and whatever else. Um, tan, white, gray, beige, almond, what have you. Go ahead, go crazy. Express yourself with caulk. Um, but anyway, I hope that uh, that's a nice way to do a floor, I think. And VCT comes in so many different colors and types. You can use different those little uh, laminate floor tiles that look like wood and make yourself a little parquet floor. There's a lot of different things you can do with this technique. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was uh, useful to you. If not, then don't do it that way. I don't care. 
Uh, but thank you very much for stopping by. Um, I love you. Well, folks, that's that. Hopefully you learned something good today. One thing I always liked about that old song about birds, it's a reminder that many birds mate for life, and they love very deeply. Also, it's a reminder that like birds, humans are social creatures. Without one another, we would go crazy. And this again, a reminder to you guys, if you ever having problems, whether it be with a project or with anything else, be sure to find a friend you can talk to. Put the kettle on, I don't want my tea cold Just a little bit of tea's good for your soul It's tea time with tea Man, I love her so much, man. I'm just, if I'm honest, it's just her behavior hurts my feelings. Jealousy doesn't come from love. It comes from feeling unsure of yourself and being afraid of getting hurt. When you really love somebody, you trust them and you don't go around prying to parts of their lives that don't concern you. That leads to a bad scene. Take it from me, Mr. T. Thanks, T. When your troubles, they start getting thick, there ain't nothing a little tea can't fix. It's tea time with tea.